Hello, this is Professor Heath Van Horn. Just showing you today Lab 17, where you will uh, configure remote access to your various networking equipment. So what we have here is a standard network. Uh, yours is going to be different. I'm just built one here for quick demonstration purposes. Um, it is very common or it's very uncommon to actually plug in a wire and get this interface um, as you can see I already labeled um, the host name the uh, it's more common to sit at your desk and not and access all the equipment remotely um, Telnet is one way it's not a recommended way because Telnet is not secure at all uh, all it is is a password, which is easy to crack. But um, Telnet is a way that if you're fairly confident in your security, you can use Telnet. SSH is the other one um, that works well, but then you're always playing with passwords. So it's, it's just one of those things that uh, uh, it depends on what your network um, designer has established as the baseline. So let's configure this one for remote access. I already pre-configured it. Um, so it's going to ask me for a password. All right, so we go in here. And the first thing we do is we configure the password. So we hit enable password and I use let me in okay then we want to activate the VLAN one which is where everything is all the ports are assigned by default and now we can get in uh, from any computer via VLAN one and so what we need to do is set the IP address, which by my label is 10.10.10.3.255.255.255.0. All right. No shut. We don't want the VLAN to turn off when it's not being used. So now we want to set up the transmission line. So it's... Uh, line VTY stands for virtual teletype um, but the acronym goes way way back so people really don't know uh, the 0 to 15 means that there can be 16 people accessing the switch at the same time so it'd be user 1 would be at point 0 user 2 would be at 1 user 3 because just because remember computer science guys they all start at 0 they all start to count to 0 so 0 to 15 means 16 separate users okay now we want to set a password and we'll just big cats why not and then we want to require the password at login and then that's it we have now configured our switch all right, so I'm now going to show you what it would normally look like from a piece uh, from the PC. So we would have a command line prompt. All right, so we would do telnet, and then we would put in our VLAN IP address. If I spelled it right, tell net. It's going to ask us for the username, so big cats. You will not see a cursor move for passwords just because that is a security issue. Uh, when cracking passwords, it helps immensely when you know exactly how many characters are in the password. So that is why they don't do the cursor movement. Um, on the screen because if people are shoulder surfing 
it makes it a lot easier. Oh, I hit him. I see him saw I press the A. I saw him press the dollar sign, and I know his password is 16 characters long. And that is a lot of information to help you crack a password. All right. You notice that my cursor has changed from C colon, which is the standard PC, to blue switch. That is why your host name labeling is so important. Uh, because if everything said switch, 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 you got three switches here, you have no idea which switch it is if your host names are not done correctly. If we want access, we got to type let me in. And now we have full access um, at this point. So f remember, we're still in the PC and we are making changes in uh, the switch. So that is how you do remote access to the switch. All right, so we'll close this. And now we'll CLI the router. All right, so the router is almost exactly the same. Again, I set this one up earlier, so it's going to ask me for a password. Uh, all right. All right, so we do the same commands. Enable password. In this case, I use knock, knock. exit again oops uh, we want to interface with VLAN 1 and we're just turning it on so that way we can gain access even if no other um, routing configuration is applied okay so we did no shut exit now we want to configure the line again virtual teletype 0 to 15 so 16 users uh, the password is going to be Cisco because I'm out of creativity and we want to require it at login all right so we exit there and now our router is configured for um, for remote access. So if we hit exit, log out. All right, so now we see that we've logged out of the blue switch. We are back to the C colon prompt which means we are back into the PC. If we want to remote into uh, the router, all we do is we telnet into our gateway. It's going to ask us for the password, which was knock, knock, whoops, Cisco. And then we hit enable, and then that's knock, knock. And now we have full access to the router. And we can treat all the commands from this PC just like we would. And so people ask me all the time, you know, hey, how do you know, how do you hack something, how do you do it? Well, we just have. I'm at one PC. I could be sitting in a cafe in France, and I just logged into a router um, on the other side of the world. So when you can figure out what the IP addresses are, which is not very hard, and the passwords, you can crack those fairly simply too. Um, you have just gained access to somebody's network and what you would do is you would um, turn on a port into promiscuous mode and then you would shuffle all the data that hit that machine into that port and you would just download it all and uh, that would give you keys to the kingdom and access to everybody's uh, network. 
So um, understanding how packets work and how your network equipment can be configured and remoted in um, is critical to cybersecurity. And that's it. So your task is to assign remote access to every switch and every router. There's only six devices. They're not that hard to do. And what I'll do is I'll pick one of these PCs at random and I will try to uh, log in to your remote access devices. Um, as you can see, they will ping between each other. You know, you can ping between here and here. Um, because but they won't route packets yet because I did not set up eGrip on here. That is another requirement that you need to do is set up eGrip. I challenge you to set up eGrip using a PC. Just use your PC to set up eGrip because you can have remote access to everything. And that gives you um, a lot of uh, interesting feeling of how this works in real life. So if you don't want to, that's fine. I mean, I can't, I'm not going to require it. Otherwise, I'd have to have you submit a video. But I would do that as a challenge. Um, it is not going to take you long to set up this network and assign some IP addresses. You notice I don't have first and last. I don't care about any of that crap. Everything is a subnet 24, so that makes things easy. But the whole point is here of this lesson is can you get... Um, remote access to all the network devices on the network and in order to do that you got to have the host names set you got to have uh, the IP addresses assigned and that is it the eGrip portion is just for practice um, you will need to set up eGrip if you want to do it via the CLI that's up to you I would highly recommend you do it from the remote command prompt um, just to give yourself a better feeling of what it is to do it in real life. Um, and that is it. So good luck. Um, have fun. This should not take you very long. And you should be able to play a lot with this. You can bring up your old labs and set them up for remote access and just kind of go, hey, this is kind of neat. All right, guys. Take care. Bye.